Hello YouTube, I'm back hopefully with a quick video just to um, answer some of your questions from my previous video. I have sort of thought I should make a frequently asked questions type video showing you the answers in real time. So hopefully I will cover memory because a lot of you have asked about that. I'll cover the always on display and I'll also cover S health um, quickly because there's quite a lot of questions about that. And if there's anything else I can think of, I will talk about that as well. So let's get right into it. If I start with the always on display, um, the questions I had were whether the second hand moves when the watch is in always on display. And I'll show you that. The short answer is yes. The long answer is it also depends on the type of clock you have, how, how the hand moves. The other thing is that is it truly always on and I'll answer that as well as we go along. So let's start now. The what you're seeing now is the always on display off um, and I'll show you how to start the, the watch. So if you just wanted the screen back up, you just rotate the bezel and I did it twice. I should do it only once and it takes me to the home screen. And there you go. Um, if you wanted to go to sleep, if you cover with your hand, and take take off your hand again um, it takes you to sleep again the other way to do this is the traditional you know rotate your wrist there you go so that's without the always on and as you can see it goes straight to sleep I think it's set for 15 seconds now if you wanted to put always on back on um, it's in settings and it's in style and in there you see there's watch faces and then there's always on. And once you click that, it will tell you all about the battery, stuff that you already know about. There you go. And then you can just click the tick here. Now it's on. So what I can show you now is the different faces. Um, first of all, you know, when it's, I'll show you the second hand. On this particular face, it moves. So there's no question. You will see it for yourselves. Um, you'll go to sleep and the second hand will move. There you go. That's the always on display actually on. You can see that you still see color. You still have um, a good level of brightness and everything is clear on the screen. But that depends on the face. So that's, the, that's this one. I'll show you a different uh, face so you can see. And if you want to see the difference, this is the always on on. And if I'm rotating just once, you can see the brightness increases. That's because the watch is now back on. So if I just hold and what you will see is different faces. Um, what I did find with this is that it is very bright at night. So what you might want to do is look for a face that is not as bright. I normally use this one. There's another one called minimal. There it is. I use that one as well at night because I like to wear my watch to bed because it tracks my sleep and it does it very well. So I don't, you know, if, you're, if you're, your partners will start complaining if you take this to bed and you haven't used uh, uh, one of those ones I've, sh I've shown you because the other ones are sort of very bright, but you will see it as you go along um, yourself. I couldn't find a setting to actually lower the brightness of the always on display or to make it less... Um, bright by a different uh, method if anyone knows of any any way to do that let me know but i couldn't find anything at all so that's your your screens i'll just take you through while i'm here all the screens so you can see uh, look at the second hand on this one you can see that it's moving i'll show you a different one so i'll show you this one so you can see here the middle one, the, the red, um, what you typically expect to be um, a second hand actually isn't. And I'll show you what it does. Once this goes to sleep, you look for the second hand. And there you go. On number three, on the right hand side, there's something moving right at the edge. It's now on four. That's kind of your second hand. And I was sitting here trying to think, um, you know, I know it says here tachymeter, but you can press 
So bring it to it's it's on always on. Press it once to bring it to life, and then if you press again, you can see it starts counting with a red and a, and a X here to stop. So if I just press that, it stops. The red I think is a pause, so it starts recording. Um, if I do that again, you can see it's counting there. And if I press the red, it pauses it. I can restart it or I can stop completely. And there we go. So each face does different things. I'll show you a different one. Uh, if I go to... Anyway, you can actually get to see all of the faces, but the one I want is at the back somewhere. Um, with the dials so this one here you can see the dials and the dials are actually live as well so they count whatever they are counting they're counting it live and they take you straight to the app if you press so if I take the one on the right hand side is uh, the pedometer it counts all my steps if I click on it I have to wake the watch up first and then click on it it takes me straight to my steps. So they are live dials and um, they do work. And as I say, depending on the uh, face that you choose, that's how the second hand moves. It sort of just depends on which which one you've chosen, really. I was trying to see if there's a different one I could show you. Um, and again, placing your hand also works to dim this to always on display. And then you have to tap it once to wake it and then do whatever you want to do. Um, there you go. There is a watch face there. I just can't find it. That does again doesn't have a second hand as such. It's just a red dot that goes around the edges, same as the other one. Um, but yeah, that's the always on display. So as I said, people wanted to know about the second hand. You can see it for yourself. Others wanted to know about is it truly always on? So apparently some always on screens turn themselves off after half an hour or so. I tried this with uh, two faces well over an hour each. I didn't see them uh, turning themselves off. They were truly always on. Um, so I, if I do keep testing and I find that's an issue I'll let you know but currently they do look like they are truly always on displays. Um, the only time I saw it turning itself right off even with the always on display on was when I put it down so I took it off my hand and put it down on a surface and I think because it knows it can't track a heartbeat it knows that you're not putting it on and then it turns the the screen off to save power. That's the only time I saw it doing it automatically. Sorry, I don't know who's calling. I've got to turn that off. Um, okay. Right. Thank you. So if I move on then, uh, I've talked about the always on display. I want to show you something about the memory. So this took me by surprise because one of you asked again about this. So if you log in, if you look, log in on your, on your phone, this is what you see. So you will see that the gear, there's information and then there's settings. And it actually tells you the battery storage and RAM you have. And some of it is just uh, suggested apps and faces. But the bit I want to talk about is this. So if you look at this, you will see that the um, middle one says 2.5 gig used out of four. Um, and that sort of took me by surprise because if I show you, uh, the apps I've got installed here. So if I go into settings um, and if I go into apps, so you see that I have a number of apps here. I think it's something like 22. From the top where it says messages and we keep going and we keep going and we keep going and we keep going up to where it says voice memo. Up to where it says email, those all came with the watch. So from the top where it said messages to email, they all came with the watch. I've only installed those five at the bottom. So I don't really know how it is that I've only got 1.5 gig left out of four. And if you want to see again, I'll show you. So from the top messages all the way down, 
came with it with the watch you can always pause and have a better look but it's just i don't want the video to be too long um so i've only installed voice memo stopwatch calculator maps and time and timer um if i go back here and i show you um info if i click on storage look at that there's nothing significant that i've installed that will take up space so you can see for yourselves that the this is what you get really in terms of space you need to keep that in mind when you're installing things on your watch i think it does compress images because i've been putting uh, i think i've got three or four five images there roughly about four mb each and i can see that the total is less so that some they, they it's, it looks like it's been compressed Okay, so that's about storage. I just thought I'd bring this to your attention. If you're looking to buy or if you already bought one, you will know that you don't have masses and masses of space. You need to take that into account. Okay, that's that. So let's just look at what else you guys wanted to know. Um, we've done always on display and we've done um, memory. If I do S health next, I was surprised by the number of people that have questions about this. It just means quite a lot of you are healthy people. You want to keep healthy. So I'm just going to remember you have to press twice if always on is on. If always on display is on, you have to wake the phone up, the watch up first and then do your moves. Um, that's why I don't really like having it because I always forget and, uh, you know, I, I start tapping furiously on the on the watch thinking that it's lagging. But it's because you got to press twice. Um, so if I go back, I've just gone into um, settings. So this is your home button here. You click that. Takes you into settings. S health. There it is. Or what you can do is once it's already selected here, you can just tap the middle. And there you go. So what people wanted to know about is the exercises, the workouts. So here we go. Um, now, I've got it under basic workout at the moment. I actually chose this because somebody said to me, can you check if the heart rate uh, works or measures while you're doing a basic workout? And I can tell you that um, it doesn't. When I tried it for basic workout, it didn't. But for the others, it did. It's uh, not basic, sorry. For the other workout, it doesn't. But for anything else, it does. So just to let you know here. So the types that you get... Here we go. So I'm not going to read through them, but I'll show you so that you can see for yourself and you know what you're getting. A number of you wanted me to actually go through this, so I'll do that. Just to take you through the list. And it doesn't stop there. Star jumps. This is the other at the end. Uh, which doesn't track your heart rate when I've tried to use it. So um, again, I'll keep it, you know, I, I, I keep finding new things every time I use this. So if anything else comes up, I will let you know. Now, there were other questions around S health in terms of can you actually, um, what was it? Let me just go into running and I'll show you. What I mean, I think somebody asked a question about intervals. Can you set intervals um, in terms of activity? If you look into running as it is for now, you can actually set a target. So, you know, there you go. And it would take, you know, you can set what you like. But what I wanted to talk about really was the um, auto pose. I'll come back to that and guide at intervals. What you can actually do is um, a, 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 if you wanted to let you know that you've covered a certain distance or you've done certain minutes, you can actually set it and it will tell you um, here. So you can see it says every 10 minutes, every 30, up to an hour. But not only that, it does it in miles as well. So you can set that as well. That's your intervals. And then somebody asked a question about, well, what if I want to set to say, run the first two miles and then pause for five minutes and then continue. It doesn't have that level, but it does it in a different way. And how it does it is this thing here, auto pause. So you just have to turn it on. It's off there and you just turn it on. What auto pause does is it recognizes when you stop doing an activity 
and when you resume it knows as well so it starts counting again so there is a workaround that you can use which is this the auto pause but it doesn't go into the specific detail of you can actually set it run two miles and then stop and then you know it does it automatically so for those that wanted to know about intervals and auto pause here we go that's that's what i could find in here um and i did a bit of running as well oh, no, not running actually i was walking today um and i wanted to see if i can show you that So my flows were counted for the day. I think my uh, maximum is 10 that I need to, my minimum that I need to achieve. And I've set this for 10,000. So I still need to do a few more steps. And it sort of tells you about your calories um, and how you've spent your day really. And what activity you've done and that kind of thing. Um, and you can compare from the previous days. I prefer, on to be fair, when I look at the history, like this i prefer to look at it on the on the phone because the phone gives you more detail and you can see trends and you can look at the past uh, however long and you got graphs and things like that so for this it's quite good at just tracking the stuff and putting it back to the phone but when i go to the phone that's when i can see a lot of my uh, activity like when i looked at my walk i actually could tell there was a map there and it was sort of showing where i had walked so that was good to see but that's um, S Health. I know that people wanted an in in depth uh, review of it, but I haven't used all the features. And what I thought I would do as the best way is just to show you the menu, so that you can also look at it yourself and think, okay, this is what it does. This is what it can track. Um, and the settings, I'll take you through that as well, just to show you, so you can. This again, you can set from your phone, but it's also here, just in case. Health nudges. You do get things like if you've been still for an hour, it tells you to get up and do some exercises. Uh, it has auto detection of any, acti not any, I think there's a few, it, they're listed activity. Once you start doing something for about 10 minutes, it will log it as, a, as an activity and it will know what that activity is. So if I walk, for example, for 10 minutes, it, it takes that as a, as a walk. Or if I just, even if I, if I haven't set it up here, it knows what activity I'm doing and it carries it on and records it. Um, auto heart rate, you know about that. I'm not doing any water and um, caffeine stuff. Um, but there you go. I thought if I took you through the menu, then you'd be able to see. Uh, I don't know if I could just have a typical exercise. Let's take uh, running, walking, one of the two. What have I done? Right, so if I do, um, oh, sorry. So if I do, what did I do? I don't know why I keep triggering this. I'm gonna keep quiet for a minute. The one I used today was this. Um, some people call it elliptical trainer, but we call it a cross trainer over here, so. There you go. So what I did is just basically um, set it up and told it I was doing this and just clicked start. But you can set your target. You can also have intervals. So I asked it to notify me when I've done five minutes and I did, I did, actually I did six minutes, sorry. And it did tell me at five minutes that I was doing it. And you can always see your log. Um, other, I was just testing this to see if it recorded the heart rate, but it didn't. And this is kind of the the one that I did and it tells you and you can have a detailed look into things duration heart rate and all that but if I went into other and you can share it as well if I went into other um, it doesn't tell you the heart rate and all the other stuff it just gives you that so yeah, it's um it's been updated this SL I I have used it, you know, in previous versions and I can see that it has much much more
than it ever did. And um, it's more helpful and actually encourages me to do a bit of exercise. So that's what I was going to show you on this one. Um, and I think I took you through the menu of what's available so you know what else is there. Um, some people were asking about the music player. Let's see if we can go through that. Um, so I think if I go here, there's a shortcut here. So here. So, you know, my my phone is there. So we'll see what this decides to do. Um, So what he's doing is playing, the last thing I played was this song on, um, let me reduce the volume otherwise you won't hear. I played this song on SoundCloud and that's what it's defaulted to. So I'm going to stop it and then I'll pause it. And then what I'll do is I'll change uh, SoundCloud and I'll put on um, Spotify. I never actually use Spotify. It's only because one of you asked whether it worked with Spotify. And I said, I'll give it a go and I'll try it. So if you see what happened before, the song that you can see there is now the one from Spotify. So if I just click that, if I pause, if I click play, it goes back to SoundCloud. This is what I found when I'm doing this, that it doesn't default to what you're playing. It defaults to, to SoundCloud for me. I don't know whether there's a way to change that. It's the first thing that I played when I got the uh, watch. I played songs from SoundCloud. So I wonder whether there's something you can do in terms of changing default. It doesn't mean that Spotify won't work. So if I close all this and then if I play that. If I go back to the music, um, if I pause, it pauses. If I play, it goes back to Drake. So it knows how to, you know, move between apps. Um, it knows how to, once you play this on the phone, it knows to keep up and to change the song. But if I close Spotify here now on my on my phone, so I'm going to... I'm going to do it manually on the phone and clear it and close it down. And if I went back to the watch and if I click play, it probably will go to SoundCloud. I didn't close it, did I? I didn't close the app, sorry. Right, here we go. See, it's gone back to SoundCloud because I've closed everything and it seems like the default is SoundCloud for some reason, although it's still showing. So if I do that and then play again, it's confused now. It's still playing. This has not happened before, so it's good that we're doing these reviews because you can then see. Um, it's still got controller on here, but that's not what's playing on there. So yeah, if I do, there's one way to check that out as well. If I do next. Yeah, so it's definitely playing from SoundCloud. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. So what you can see here is that it does play it, it, you know, I've tried it with different players and it does play with all different players. But what it doesn't always know is the default. I don't know how to set that. I don't know how you decide which player is, is best. It always defaults to SoundCloud for me. If I stop everything else and I click play again, it defaults to SoundCloud. But when I set it up, that's the only player I had on there that I used frequently, if you see what I mean. So maybe that's how it, it's got that on its uh, system. I'll, I'll still try and find if there's a way to change that round. Um, just to talk about other things, I think somebody asked about WhatsApp, whether you can reply with a voice. I won't show you now because my video is getting too long. But yes, you can reply to WhatsApp with a voice message. So you get those three options, voice, uh, text, emoji. You can also write in the message. But yes, you can talk to um, high gear and it should come up. 
and then you can answer your question. All right. I hope you have a good day. I think that's all I wanted to talk about today. If there are any more questions, let me know. Um, but yeah, that's it really I wanted to talk about today. Thank you.